It's, it's tabletop tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. And I'm Jen. And we've got a long time feud going on. Because I am painting an awesome Chaos Knight in this video, and Jen's got a problem with that. Uh, yeah, the Emperor has a problem with that. Will you go and pray to the Emperor about that while me and the viewers enjoy me painting this awesome Dark Mechanicus Knight? And if you haven't seen the build, it's linked up in the card, but uh, it's gonna be a... It's gonna be a good one today. Ah, uh, yep. Selfie bucket. So I'm alone, Murray's on break. He's taking a couple of much deserved days off and Jen isn't working today. So I need to do something cool and that sounds like painting my Dark Mechanicus Knight. Bunch of you requested it, let's do it. It's gonna be fun. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is actually build up a base. I deliberately left this out of the last video uh, so I could do it in this one. Let's go. D -d -d Batman wipe. Dun -dun -dun -dun. So for any suitably epic project, it's important to have a suitably epic base. And as this knight is going to be in a suitably commanding position, leading a bunch of little war dogs, I wanted to raise this knight up a little bit so the profile sat higher than the other Questorus knights in my traitor knight army. As this will be fighting alongside my traitor guard, I wanted to base it in the same battlefield, but with large bases such as these, we can really start to create scenes. So continuing the ideas I established in my Astra Miller field guns, I wanted to make a trench works. And specifically, I wanted to make this knight marching over the top of a trench work. So I used an infantry soldier to get the correct height. And then I used large cork sheets. These were actually coasters from Ikea for $2 for a packet of like four of them to build up all of the height I would need to put the knight on. Then I put some cork on the other side, leaving just a thin gap for the trench. started cutting out matchsticks, this would be all the wood plank that sits along the ground. I checked the size to make sure it didn't seem absurdly huge for a human and set about placing these on the base. To support erosion along the trench walls, I would need something, and these are usually held up with wooden pillars. And I paid special attention to an area that would be falling in, where the foot of the knight will be crumbling the edge of the trench. I filled out the top of this section with sandbags and also used a whole bunch of sandbags around the foot, so it looked like the knight had sort of kicked these off the edge or they were crumbling into the trench with the knight's footfall. These are cool sandbags from Gamers Grass, and I really like them. So thanks, Gamers Grass, for sending them along. However, at this stage, I was missing something. So I don't have exactly what I need. I'm really happy with how this trench board is coming along, but I need some corrugated iron sheets and plastic card. And I also need some black primer because this with the magnet string attached to it is not going to cut it. Conveniently, uh, I own the local poppy store. So uh, let's, let's go on an adventure. Oh my gosh, it's Jen. It's like my staff is sick and you're filling in today. Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab some stuff. Right. Does this look like corrugated iron to you? Yes. Sold. Uh, give this a try. Ah, the good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Doris. Bye. Happy hobby. I was back from the store with my corrugated iron sheets, so I cut them to size and just slotted them between those matchsticks. These corrugated sheet metal pieces between the wood would be all that my trader guard needed to hold the trench up and prevent erosion so they could fight their heart's content. I used a hairdryer to heat bend and then placed some in the rubble to make it look like some of this sheeting had been torn away by the night. I then used some Vallejo earth texture to paste it all out, mixing some with stone to get some different textures and basically just covering everything. This world will be a semi-barren world that has been choked with ash and soot. So it's all gonna be painted in a dark black to gray. This just represents all the dirt and soot underfoot. Bonus points to myself for creating a trickle of sand falling out of a torn in half sandbag. And this really sells that the knight's footstep has just crushed the trench and the damage is still being done. The Primarch did not turn to look at the person who spoke, a gray presence standing on the edge of the light. There were just the two of them. So here's the theory. Uh, 
I can't really record very well me spray painting because I'm on my own today. But what's going on is I've sprayed it black to get a nice dark undertone for the metals. I've now done a spray of lead belcher. And then I'm going to use some Vallejo silver spray from Just the Zenithal to give that silver a bit of a highlight. Now, this isn't the final work on the underbody, but a lot of the mechanical areas will have this as the base coat. Then I'm going to go in and pick out all the more interesting detailed metals in different metallic colors and then give the whole thing a delicious run of streaking gray to represent those 10,000 years in the warp that this Dark Mechanicus beast has been striding around. See you on the other side. Uh, I'm putting some Munitorum varnish before I do some streaking grime. Because I can't see unless I'm looking into shadow because it's so glary. Oh, it smells like coconut. Munitorum varnish. Coconut rock flavored. It was time to start painting my night in earnest now that the base was drying. So I got some black spray as well as silver lead belcher for the base and silver from Vallejo for the highlight to spray all of the armor. This undersuit, I then came in with some other scale 75 metallics just to give a whole bunch of variants to the armor. I didn't worry about washes and highlights here because streaking grime was gonna do a bunch of that work for me. The one exception to this were the brass elements where I did give a nice little highlight to because the silver areas already had the spray to do that work for. It's prime time. With the grime applied, I could use my woolly doorbar to pull back some of that grime and really start to see this come together. It's a really nice effect and I'm happy with it. A really grungy, dirty Dark Mechanicus night that will play nicely off the pops of bright color on the armor. I continued this process for the top of the night with one exception where I painted some yellow and black striped cables just so that wash and weathering of the streaking grime would be applied to that as well. So I have already got a Chaos Knight, and I guess this is where my Chaos Knights turn into a bit of a household. I'm also thinking of using them in Horus Heresy, but I wanted to play around with the paint scheme, maybe make it a little bit more interesting. So I decided to use this marbling technique. Originally, I was attracted to this airbrushed marbled looking armor from the old Forge World paint masterclasses on the Chaos Reaver Titan. By using a dried out cleaning cloth, stretching it thin and then spraying gray and white through it, you get a really nice gradient that leaves these nice black marbling lines underneath. And then once that's done, I come in with some very, very bright, I believe it's Baal red contrast paint to spray over the top. I did originally test using some Black Legion to spray the other side black to emulate the slightly brown tinged black armor on my other Chaos Knight, but ultimately I didn't like the effect and decided I would just be going through and hand painting those panels the way I had for my previous night. I gotta say the effect of peeling this off was really satisfying. And I think even just white with this marbling effect is gorgeous. And I'd love to see a knight scheme like this. But my evil knights are from House Atrax, which means a red and black color scheme. So I'm gonna have to go over this nice white marbling. Now Mechanicus aligned knight houses, even those that have fallen to chaos, uh, don't have as much personal heraldry as the more noble variant. However, this knight in particular was once destined to be a baron or at least a significant commander. So the top of his carapace gets a nice red stripe. All right, it's time for me to base coat and start painting uh, this very spicy base that I've made for my knight. I want to get this done and basically build the knight from the ground up, focusing on being able to glue it onto the base and then glue the torso on just to give it something really stable. When you have these builds that have a lot of conversions and are quite delicate, the worst thing that can happen is they just fall over and break. So it's important to me that I get this base painted so I can glue the legs on, really build that stability up. So I'm not panicking that while I build the damn thing, uh, it breaks. So yeah, let's do it. Painting the base was super easy. A nice gray dry brush over all of the rock and then some silvers on the corrugated iron. I used sponging to bring in oranges and browns to rust up that metal and then just painted the sandbags in khaki with a little dry brush highlight. The wood was all painted in a rather gross looking brown. I gotta say, I think it's maybe a tone lighter than I would have liked, but hey, I'll live with that and I will pull that back with some weathering powders later. With the base drying once again, I could move back on to painting the night. 
Now I like to experiment with new and different things when I paint each model. So House Atrax have these weird sort of brassy colored trim on all of their panels. I decided to put a bit of a poisonous green tinge to it to represent their true falling to the dark mechanicus. It just gives a little bit of an otherworldly weirdness to the color scheme. Maybe it's warp influence, maybe it is the influence of Heretex, but either way, I like the way this metal tints. Bringing it up from there, I used the original base color as well as Peridot Alchemy, which is a scale 75 green tinged paint. Then I finished it off with some silver highlights. With the gold trim done and the red on the armor panels, that left painting all of the gray. One of the other reasons I decided to hand paint these gray areas of the models was there's several areas on the underbody also have this and I really couldn't be bothered masking off like 90% of my model just to do some airbrushing on these sections. So uh, after coming in with the tweezers to pull all the woolly dolber fluff off the model, I got out my trusty grays and started to repaint a lot of the gray areas on the model that are left silver here. That includes the toes as well as areas on the weapon arm, such as the gun shield that are clearly meant to be painted armor rather than undersuit. As I thought about starting this paint step, I did realize that I had these sort of black umbilical cable sections, the little corrugated sections between the limbs. And I realized that if they're black and I'm highlighting them as gray, they're going to look pretty similar to the black armor. So instead, I decided to come in with a bluer tinged gray, somber gray to highlight these sections just to make them nice and distinct from the other black elements of the model. Now, the way I paint my grays for this night house is I start with black, move up through Vallejo's heavy charcoal. Then I use Skaven Blight Dinge and Storm Vermin Fur in various mixes to come up to this nice, slightly brown tinged black or gray. It's probably close to gray. With these elements done, I could glue the legs onto the base and let that dry. I've still got a bit to do on the upper chassis. And as I glue these on, I'm really excited to see when this comes together with some weathering pigments. It's always my favorite step to really seat this in the landscape. But for now, it's time to move on to some of the really important focal details on this night. That means painting the spindle drone's head on the front and also the tau drones. Having come fresh off the back of making a awesome, huge Sakura Storm Surge proxy, I knew exactly how to paint this drone. That's Viejo's cold gray and stonewall gray with a little bit of white towards the tips. This was just blended out nicely to make a neat Tau Sakura drone, the black trim around the edge, all perfect and pristine as if it hasn't seen a day of battle. That of course would be changing later. Well, why would my knight have a Tau drone attached to it? Well, it's time for a tiny bit of fluff. So in order to make a justification out of all the things I do, I have a little bit of lore about how my night house would work. It all goes back to the time of Horus Heresy, and this is canon lore. So the Forge World Cycler Thraith had the night house House Atrax in its thrall, basically using them as indentured servants and slaves. But when Archmagos Dracavac staged a bloody coup and took over the leadership of Cycler Thraith, he began to to control the Knights of House Atrax with an iron grip, using them as his personal bodyguard. They would go on to be involved in many cataclysmic actions and most of them would end up being destroyed. And this is where I come in. My primary force in Horus Heresy is the Alpha Legion and many parts of the Alpha Legion have worked closely with the Mechanicus in the past. So a small sub-faction of the Forge World Cyclothraith, which were deployed with my Alpha Legion forces, including their House Atrax Knights, were abroad when the coup on Cyclothraith occurred. And sensing the change in power and the imminent risk to their life, the Archmagoses involved decided to not return and start doing their own thing. So it would begin 10,000 years of close alliance between my Alpha Legion forces and their supporting ex-Cyclothraith allies. And this included the Knights of House Atrax, growing over those years to have more personality and grow to be the centerpieces of my Dark Magos' armies. This one in particular has been heavily modified. The Silica Animus Abominable Intelligence of a spindle drone being plugged into the front of it and being regulated by some fresh Tau Xenotech. This extra sensor array and shield generator just keeps all those add-ons safe. So we're definitely entering the home stretch now. I have to paint the spindle drone on the front of the model and I'm not entirely sure how I want to do that, but I'm thinking I want to paint it similar to the original paint scheme, but just darker. So there's kind of a green undertone that will sit in with the rest of my night, especially the armored carapace. And then I'm going to do some of that purple light from the eye and then breaking 
it around the wound where the cable is plugged into the head. Uh, I've also got to put some markings on those Tau drones and I'm thinking they have to be Sakura themed. I mean, got to be that pink and red. And then broadly, I need to weather up the Tau drones and I'm getting pretty close to finished. With the Tau drones painted, I needed to take a quick detour to just adding some final touches to the red panels. This included a Caraberg crimson wash to all the recesses and around the edges and then a sharp Wild Rider red highlight along all the straight edges and rivets. Now to paint the actual spindle drone on this night, I decided to paint it very closely to the official paint scheme. However, I effectively dropped all the colors several notches. This is using Vallejo's scurvy green mixed with charcoal and a little bit of white. And then I just do a stipply little layer coat all the way up through the various coats. It's quite a satisfying process. And with sharp highlights done, I grabbed one of the new Broken Anvil purple paints and mixed it with white to build a glowing effect around the eye and where the cable plugs into the spindle drone's head. It's not the usual lens color I would use for my Dark Mechanicus, but it is the eye color of the spindle drones on the art, so I think it makes a lot of sense here. So there are a couple of little lenses on the top carapace of the night, and I decided to paint these with a purple lens as well to show that this spindle drone had taken over control of the night and its systems had flooded into the Imperial machine. So I did something at home. I'm sorry, everyone. I have to confess, I couldn't risk doing it. I had one shot with the marbling effect. Couldn't make mistakes, so I had to get in like this. I did some freehand. I've done the little house Atrax chapter symbol or night house symbol. My knights are a 40K survivor of the ancient Horus Heresy Knights house Atrax. And I need to do freehand and markings, but I can't finish these in this video. I've done the house markings, but I actually need your help. This is a Blackstone Fortress infused abominable intelligence in a night in 40K Dark Mechanicum. It's a lot going on, right? So. What kind of personal sigils and heraldry should I put on this knight? I genuinely don't know. I'm not sure if I should lean into it being an entity that has asked for stuff to be painted on its knight or more warding things that the Mechanicus might have done. I'm really not sure. So beyond these swords of House Atrax, yeah, uh, we've got some empty panels to fill and I'd like your help filling them. So putting it all together, it was time to put those weathering pigments on the base using a huge amount of brown weathering pigment to make this look super dirty and rubbing that up the legs of the knight. I really like the way how this grounds and blends the two elements, the knight and the base together. And overall, it's a process that's really fun to complete. Once the pigment is applied, I airbrushed on some airbrush thinner, which acts as a setting agent for that weathering pigment. we can finally take a look at what the night is going to turn out looking like. We'd like to give a massive shout out to everyone who supports us on Patreon. We've been trying really hard to produce some content that you guys are loving. Two videos a week and lots of passionate builds. They take a lot of work and a lot of time, especially to do these giant nights and things like this. And when you're doing two videos a week, it's hard to keep up, but it's only thanks to you, the patrons, that we can attack projects of this scope. So please consider joining up a few dollars a month to support the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the mini review, there's an option for that too. Jen, I know that through this video, I converted you to chaos a little bit more because you were such a big help. Thank you in helping me paint those panels. You're welcome. I'm proud of this. It's, I feel like a daddy to a little demon knight. This abominable intelligence. Look at it. It's so fun. 
And guess what? I have two Forge World Knight Moiraxes that are just begging to be built alongside this. So uh, yeah, if you'd be keen to see me turn my Free Blade Chaos Knights into a full-sized Chaos Knight faction for 40k 10th edition, I'd be super pumped to do that. It'd be really cool. I've got two, as you saw in this video, I have two full-size Chaos Knights, a couple of Moiraxes, a couple of War Dogs, and uh, I reckon we're looking pretty good. Just so, no. Like? No. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more of this kind of content. And thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you in the next one. Better be a loyal video. Uh, more, more chaos? No. Chaos? No. Or maybe Loyalists. something else? Can I paint something? No. Oh. Come on, Mari. The whole, the whole box is Tyranids. You'll be fine. <laughs>